Take one man with a dream and lock him in the icy depths of the ocean. That's our story, Salvage, taken from the files of John Steele, adventurer. Hello, friends. This is John Steele. We're back this week to bring you a really unusual story of adventure. This is one of those one-in-a-million tales that you come across once in a lifetime. As I've said before, these stories are not mine, but those of people I've met in my travels. This one happened to a man I'm really proud to know. I first met George McCready when I was in the Navy station in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. But, uh... Suppose we let him tell his own story. George? Like father, like son, they say. And that's the way it was with Billy and me. I joined the Navy when I was 17, and when Billy was through with high school, there wasn't any question about what he wanted to do. Only it was a good deal easier for him than it was for me, because his old man was a full commander when he went in. He had spent all his life around Navy bases. I kind of hoped he had picked deep-sea diving school so as I could help him along, but he decided on submarines and... I figured that was close enough to suit me. After he was through with his training, I pulled some strings and had him assigned to a sub based at Portsmouth so I could keep an eye on him. That's why I knew he was outside waiting that day, the day I was called over to the medics. It was comforting hey, uh, just to know he was there. report back from the lab, George. Thought you'd want to know the score. Hey, number one, huh, Harry? Well, you're not in bad shape for an old guy. What do you mean, old? You were a chief when I was a second-class seaman. Yeah, but I've been sitting behind this desk for the last ten years while you've been out doing a young man's work. What are you working around to? George, we've known each other for quite some time. Give me the facts. Okay. Your diving days are over. Bad as that, huh? I'm afraid so. It's funny, I feel great. I know you do. That last case of the bends was the straw. Pump, huh? Well, the heart's a delicate instrument. It can take just so much abuse and then it quits. It was only a mild attack. I was over it as soon as they stuck me in the recompression. I know. I'll use a helium suit. Helium, nitrogen, what's the difference? They bring you up to the surface too quick just once and that's it. Yeah. You quit now and you're good for another 15 or 20 years. But one quick ascent and I couldn't guarantee anything beyond a year. A year. That's all, maybe less. Yeah. I'm forwarding this report to the captain, George. He'll probably call you in in a few days. Thanks, Harry. There's still a McCready in the Navy, George. Yeah, thanks. What's dope, Pop? Not good, huh? Not bad. What do you think you're for? Nothing serious. Well, I think it put Wait till we get outside. Well, square that hat, sailor. Oh, sorry. No self-respecting sailor. Sailor walks around with his hat cockeyed. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Skipper. What'd the doc say? Well, you see, us underwater sailors got some problems you guys don't know anything about. Like, uh, what's the estimated lead given a target moving at 16 knots a half a mile range? Any young punk can fire a torpedo. Sure, that's why they make all the young punk submarine commanders. Just like setting off a firecracker. I gave that up when I was six. You couldn't stand the noise. I don't know what makes you fish jockey so cocky. You know, I heard they made those divers' helmets out of metal to keep their heads from swelling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, give me the straight stuff. What do you mean? What'd the doc say? He said... Oh, go sail your boat. Come on. I wish I could fool you like I can your mother. Well, you can't. Okay. He said no more diving. Well, that's a tough assignment, Skipper. Well, I've been getting a little sick of it. For like I'm few... sick of Betty Grable. I'm on the level. I know, Skip. I had to come sometime. Yeah. Probably lucky I lasted this long. You lasted because you're the best. Where'd you hear that? You told me. Well, don't you forget it. You won't let me. <laughs> Maybe I'll transfer to the submarine service. No, don't start that. They're either too young to know what's good for them or too old to care. Coming home for dinner tonight? No, I don't think we'll be back in time. Run still scheduled? We're shoving off 1400 In this weather? No, it's just a test run, routine stuff. Well, what are you doing here? Mr. Halsey gave me an hour liberty. You should be helping to nail her down. All my work was done. Well, get going now. You'll be late. I'll be ten minutes early. Well, get going anyway. Okay. We'll talk about this some more later, Pop. Billy, 
Yeah? Not a word of this to your mother. You know me, Pop. Keep your feet dry. Yeah, honey. Glad you got home for the storm. <laughs> a real Navy wife. Barometer's been dropping all afternoon. You pay more attention to that barometer than you do to your old man. Meaning? That. When are you going to grow up? Maybe next year. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> Saw Billy over at the base this afternoon. Will he be home for supper? Said not to wait for him. Probably be late. And I got double chops for him, too. Chops? When do we eat? Supper will be ready in 15 minutes. Papers in on your chair. Thanks. Radio. Ah. Al O'Brien was over raking up the front yard this afternoon. Oh, you shouldn't have let him do it, honey. I tried to stop him. Well? You know how he feels about you. That's silly. Long time ago. He can't help it. Didn't save young Al anyway. Doesn't make any difference to him. He says if anyone could have saved him, it was you. Just doing my job. Doing your job. You know you should have gotten a Navy Cross for the S-4. Cross wouldn't have made up for 40 men lost. Of course not, but you risked your life. Now, Martha... You did, and you should have... It's not important now. No, guess it isn't. No? You'll get another chance, George. Maybe. And when you do, I know you'll... We interrupt this program to bring you a special announcement. The Navy Department has just announced that the tender Pauling has rammed and sunk the submarine Sarpin five miles east of Portsmouth. George, that's Billy. Be quiet. Sarpin is believed to have had a crew of 56 naval officers and men and two civilian technicians on board at the time of the collision. Got to call the base. Other details will be brought to you as soon as they are available. We return you now to the program to which we listen. Listen, Martha, it may not be as serious as you think. Billy. All those men have been trained with the monsoon long. They can get out with an even break. Yes. Now, that's better. Now, we'd like to call the base. Line's busy. Keep ringing. Ports with the Navy base. Get me Captain Steele. I'm sorry, sir. I have orders not to accept calls for the captain. This is Commander McCready speaking. I'm sorry, Commander. My son's on that sub. Just a moment, Commander. I'll try to connect you. Go ahead, please. Captain Steele. This is McCready, Captain. Yes, McCready. Sorry, I have no news for you. No news? The Pauling stayed over her till her phone buoy came up, so we have a line on her. That's all I can tell you for now. Well, how deep is... There's over 30 fathoms of water by the chart. 200 feet. It's deep. We've alerted the entire eastern seaboard. Salvage crews are being rushed as fast as possible. Captain... Can I... Sorry, McCready. I've got your medical report on my desk right in front of me. I couldn't take a chance. Besides, the Falcon shoved off 15 minutes ago. But the Falcon shorthanded with Sauron leave and me... We've done all we can for tonight. We should have help by morning. But, Captain... I know how you feel, but rest assured, we're doing everything possible. Yeah. Thanks, Captain. What did he say? Well, everything's going to be all right, Martha. All we gotta do is wait. Why don't you try to sleep, Martha? I'm all right. You're gonna just wear yourself out. Every time I close my eyes. Now, that's no way to think. You gotta hope for the best. It's getting light. Just lie down here on the couch. I'll cover you with a blanket. That's better. House is cold. Yeah, I'll put another log on. Have some heat in a minute. Can't understand why they let the Falcon go out without you. I told you, I didn't have time. They wanted to get that telephone boy on board before the line snapped. Probably send me out at dawn. Then why don't they call? You should be getting ready. They will. What time is it? Yeah, almost five. Clock's fast. Time for the news. Yeah, I'll turn it on. The clock and time for the hourly news summary of the news. 
The Navy Department has released no further information on the fate of the 58 men trapped on the submarine Sarpent sunk yesterday afternoon in a collision off Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Martha. The interest of the entire nation is centered on Martha. the small Navy base at Portsmouth, where rescue Good. operations were halted by darkness. Good. The Navy Department has been swamped by telegrams and telephone calls. Base. This is Commander McCready. Yes, Commander. Is Captain Steele on duty? He's been here all night, sir. Can I speak to him? I'll try to connect you. Thanks. Go ahead, please. Yes, McCready. Sorry to bother you, Captain. That's all right. I understand. Any news? We know that there were 33 men alive in the control compartment amidship. How, uh, what about the men up forward? Don't know. The sea was heavy and the telephone line snapped right after the fog and got the buoy aboard. We've been trying to reach them by radio, but so far we haven't made contact. Captain. No, McCready. Couldn't I just go out in ten lines or something? I know how you feel. Let me go, Captain. Be here at seven. Thanks. Thanks. By nine o'clock, we were circling the Falcon, waiting for a lull in the gale so we could board her. At last, the wind let up enough for us to try a landing. Coast Guardsman brought her in close as he dared, and we jumped aboard. By noon, the gale was blowing out to sea, and around two, Commander Norton, skipper of the Falcon, was getting ready to put a diver over the side. Who's going down, Norton? Collins, Captain. Collins? Best we got, George. Well, he's never made a deep dive. Sour's being flown back from Lee, but he won't get in until tomorrow. We gotta get an airline down there. That'll keep the men alive till we get help. Where's Collins? Half by the stage. They're dressing him now. Mind if I talk to him? Wish you would. Thanks. Hi, Collins. Hello, Mr. McCready. How do you feel? Okay, I guess. Nothing to worry about. Sea's still rough, but we'll be able to handle you okay. Yes, sir. We don't know where the grapnel caught, but the first thing you do, unlock that grapnel and tie it securely to the sub. Yes, sir. You got to do just one job. Get those airlines connected. I know. One more thing. Huh? This isn't much difference from a hundred-foot dive. Now you just got a little more compensating to do. Keep increasing your air pressure as you go down, or the water will squeeze you to death. But don't get too much pressure, or you'll blow yourself topside like a balloon. I understand. Okay, kid, good luck. Mr. McCready? Yeah? Will you do me a favor? Sure, kid. Pin my phone for me. Glad to. Watch your head. Here comes your lid. Phone check. Phone check. Intake. Check. Exhaust. Check. On your feet, kid. I'll help you on the stage. Hang on. Put him over. Up, up, steady. Now starboard. More. Steady. Hand me that phone, sailor. Can you hear me, Collins? Yes, sir. Reach out and grab that descending line. Right. Good. Let him down easy. Easy, I said. How's it feel, kid? Cold. As soon as you get down 100 feet, we'll stop the stage. Right. Watch your 10 take. Yes, sir. That's about 75. Steady, winch. Steady. That's it. Okay, Collins, off the stage. Water's hugging me. Take on a little more air. Not too much. Want to feel that suit against you, but no pressure. Better? Yes, sir. Now slide down the descending line. Right. Keep your free hand on the intake valve. Right. Keep feeding, a little at a time. Nice and easy. Want to do a good job, kid. Steele and Norton are right behind me watching. They want to swap? A little at a time. Easy, easy. Down. Where are you? Can't tell. What's your visibility? About three feet. Secure that descending line. Doing it now. There. She healed over? No, she's sitting up straight. I seem to be after the conning tower. Work your way forward. Slow, though. Watch your footing. Don't worry, we got your lines up taut. You using your light? Yeah. See anything? Not yet. Did you say it was going to be cold? Just pretend you're taking your Saturday night bath. Yeah. Something ahead looks like the tower. Give her a couple of wraps, kid. 
Let them know you're there. Sure. Collins? No answer. Try again. Nothing. Let's get that air into them. Right. Work around to the port side. Yes, sir. You find the high-low hatch? Water's hucking again. Take on more air. Yeah. Just bleed it in. Want to feel the suit? Okay? Yeah. There's a hatch. Work off the cover. How you doing? It's coming. There. Okay, sir. Now couple your lines. Intake to the high, exhaust to the low. Take it easy, son. You're almost done. It's cold. I know. Water's hugging. Better not take any more air. Can you work? Yeah. Okay, intake's connected. Try for leaks. Start your intake pump. Any leaks? Nope. Got your other line coupled. Water's pressing. Work fast, kid. Yeah. Okay, exhaust connector, check for leaks. Start your exhaust pump. Any leaks? Collins. Collins. Pull him up. Quick, pull him up. Holding, Norton? Seem to be, Captain. Hope they'll last till morning. Yeah. Bad break this weather closing in again. Blowing worse than before. Yeah. How's Collins, Captain? Won't be able to dive for a month. Where is he, George? Left him in the sick bay. He was resting comfortably. Any radio contact? No. You know what the litmus test showed? That exhaust air had 7% carbon dioxide. It's not fatal to 10%. 7 is over the critical line. They could just be unconscious. Yes, they could be. Then the fresh air would revive them. It could. Captain. Yes, McCready. I have to go down. Those men have been down there for 36 hours. It's 30 T degrees Fahrenheit at the bottom. They'll die of exposure unless we get them out. I can't risk your life on what may be a hopeless mission. They can't hold out much longer. Sowers grounded in Chicago. The car meant put in at New London. Help won't get to us for two days. That'll be too late. Yes. If we get one hour of diving weather tomorrow, that's all I need. Norton? A diver's job's easy, Captain. McCready could do it blindfolded. You know what the medical report said? One more case of the bends and I you'll know, be... I know, I know. All right. On one condition. Yeah? When you get down, you rap on the sub. If you get an answer, you go ahead. If you don't, we pull you up right away. Thanks, Captain. <laughs> itself out during the night. By 10 o'clock, the sea had smoothed down enough for me to go over the side. The job was easy. Attached to my diving suit was a hauling down wire. All I had to do was secure that wire to the center of the hatch from the soften. Then the rescue bell could slide down the wire and seat itself on the deck of the sub right over the hatch. The last thing I saw as I went over the side was Captain Steele taking my telephone line. I guess he didn't trust me to keep my end of the bargain. How's it feel, McCready? Cold. We let you down easy stages. Okay. No point in rushing now. Yeah. I'll let you know the 25-foot levels. Okay. There's your first one. Right. If you start to feel dizzy when you get down, stop working till it passes. I'm okay. No oxygen jag with a helium suit. Just be careful. Okay. There's your 50 feet. Right. taking on oxygen. Right. Not too much. I know. Uh, 
There's 75. Yeah. Too fast? No. When you get to 100, take a rest before you leave the stage. If I need it. There's your 100. Okay. Take it easy. I'm going on down. All right. Visibility's getting bad. Your line's free of the stage? Yeah. I'll keep calling your depth. Okay. There's 125. Right. Start breathing your oxygen. Right. How's the temperature? It's all right in the suit. Hands are cold. There's 150. Okay. What's your visibility? About 15 feet. Be less at the bottom. Yeah. Watch your oxygen. I am. There's 175. Slow her up. Right. Had Collins out of 190. Right. You hit yet? No. Bottom. Take a rest, McCready. I'm okay. What's visibility? About 10 feet. Could be worse. Yeah. How's your oxygen? Okay. Keep my lines taut and moving forward. Yeah. See the tower yet? Not yet. Take it easy. Right. There's the tower. Good. Another ten feet. Take your time. That's Collins Airlines. Okay. Give me a little play on my lines. Right. I'm going to say hello. Chad. Right again. Right. Ready? No. Again. Yeah. The answer? Not yet. I'm gonna bring you up, Mac. Captain. We agreed. But they'd have answered by now. Captain. They're answering. Talk to him, Mac. Yeah. Thirty. Still thirty alive. Good. Get to work with that wire, Mac. Yeah. Just a minute, Captain. Oh. Give me more slack, Captain. You want a cup of Give me more slack. Right. That's where she was hit. Near the hatch? Just forward. Can you secure the wire? Yeah. Take your time. You okay, Mac? Suit's leaking. Must have snagged on the wreck. Bad? No. Give me more air. Pressure will keep the water out. Be careful. Yeah. Give me more. If you take any more, you'll blow yourself topside. I'll hang on with one hand, work with the other. More air. Still leaking? Give me more. I'll bring you up, Mac. Almost finished. More air. Got it, Mac? Got it? Yeah, yeah. Hey, 
Your lines are slack. Back, you're blowing up. Rescues a submarine sergeant. Commander McReady descended to the sunken craft against the instructions of the medical officer and at great personal risk. Knowing that his son was lost on the Sarpent, he continued his rescue efforts. Ripping his diving suit on the damaged craft, he clung with one hand to the wreck while completing his mission. By his initiative and resourcefulness throughout this hazardous assignment, which resulted in the rescue of 30 survivors, Commander McReady upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, Secretary of the Navy. Congratulations, Commander. Thank you, Captain. We're proud of you, George. Yeah. Is, is that all there is to it? That's all. Yeah. Well, thanks, Captain. Thank you, Mac. See? That wasn't so bad, was it? No. No. Hi, Mr. McCready. Oh. Oh, hello, Collins. Meet Mrs. McCready. Hello, Collins. How do, ma'am? Heard about the cross? Been waiting to say congratulations to you. Oh. Yeah, thanks, son. Doc says I'll be ready to dive in a couple of weeks. Good. Better hurry up. Got a lot to teach you. What's the rush? You got all the time in the world. Yeah. Of course, all the time in the world. Well, come on, Martha. It's getting late. Title, Salvage, the story of a man who made a deal with the sea and traded one for 30. And if you like Georgia's story, why not come back next week, friends? I'll have four people who had an unusual adventure on the steps of a cathedral in the big city with a man who left before he came. I like to call it witness. So until next week, this is John Steele saying... A life of adventure is yours for the asking, wherever you find it. Only, don't look for it. It may find you. Well, so long and good hunting. John Steele Adventurer is produced by Robert Monroe, written and directed by Elliot Drake. Jim Bowles was heard as George McReady. Also in our cast were Abby Lewis, Ross Martin, and Jack Orison. John Steele was played by Don Douglas. The orchestra was conducted by Sylvan Levin. Your announcer, Ted Melly. Remember, next week, Mutual presents Witness, another story of suspense and action from the files of John Steele Adventurer. <laughs> This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.